So this is our third part of the Horns uh, educational series. And before you click away, if you are not a Horn fan, you need to know that every speaker basically has horn properties. So I intentionally put here a pair of bookshelf speakers because if you do not understand the concept of horns and what horns do to the sound, then you will not uh, fully understand why bookshelf speakers sound the way they like. And when you know how horns work, what do they do to the sound, then you will be able to make a, a much more educated guess on choosing suitable loudspeakers for you, even if they are not horn loudspeakers. For example, a pair of low efficiency loudspeakers. So yes, even if uh, you, you found a pair of bookshelves which are just 83 dB sensitivity, which is just as far from a high efficiency horn system as it can be, but it still uses enough horn effect that uh, you will benefit if you learn about this. So now in this third episode of this series, I look at the horns from a different perspective in each of these four episodes. And now I will show you what horns do. So basically in a visual way, horn is an acoustic gearbox and uh, and it does the same thing as as a transmission does on a bike or or a car or any other vehicle and it's needed because your speaker driver cone as it moves forward and backward it it cannot transmit energy to the air with high efficiency it's not good at it it's like having a bike without any transmission. So, so when you mount one of these old bicycles, then it's really hard to get it going. And, and once it starts to roll, then you have some control over it. But, but otherwise, it's, it's, a, it's a total mess and, and really inconvenience. Uh, it requires a lot of muscle strength to just get it moving. And when you have a good sh gear shift system on, on a bike, like on a modern bike, then uh, it's, it's night and day. Uh, the, the, the comfort level between the, old, the bike without shifting and with gearbox is, is tremendous. And that's the difference that a horn, a properly designed horn, does to your speakers. So that's how much control it will give uh, over the motion of the air. So just think about it as, as, as horns give the advantage of high acceleration and high torque. So if there is no horn, then, then the, the move, the, how the air moves, how the pressure waves move, their acceleration ratio will be much smaller and the torque, the, the energy behind it, uh, will not be transmitted to, to the air. So, so when you have a horn-loaded speaker, that horn loading uh, increases the dynamic resolution and it also adds impact and speed to the sound. Just the same thing as a gearbox does to your car or to your bicycle or dirt road bike. <laughs> so another uh, way to, to show what, what happens is that uh, horns are there to do this kind of change between how, how your speaker membrane, how the cone uh, touches the air. So if you do not have a horn loading on top of it, then uh, because there's such a great difference between the density of your cone and the density of the air, that your cone ends up punching the air. And instead of, uh, so our goal would be like here to push a car, your car broke down and you have to push it up a little bit further and and uh, in, a, in a speaker scenario without horn 
you would just end up denting your car you can't push it that you if you want to make it moving you just end up denting it and if you have uh, horn loading then in that case it it's much more like this scenario then you can transmit the energy into motion instead of destruction so that's what horns do and if the horn is properly built that's the effect and why people uh, are are afraid of horns or they don't like them is because uh, of poorly designed horns so what they hear is not the horn not the horn effect but the effect of what happens when the horns were poorly designed and uh, because horns are make the efficiency much higher any kind of speaker design problem will be magnified with a horn system so that's why it's much harder to find a, a, a really well built horn system because it needs to be perfect in order to be acceptable and if you have a efficiency speaker even if it's uh, built like a really crappy car like that that sort of level it will be still acceptable for mass production and 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 uh, mass listening <laughs> because you will not it, it will be hiding the weaknesses so when you have a horn there's nothing to hide and people's comments because of that when when they hear these unbalanced horn systems is they accuse uh, horns of being unnatural sounding and uh, however the there's there's a huge problem with this statement is because horns are the most natural sound reproduction systems so actually our vocal system is a horn based system and human voice that's the most natural sound that that uh, you can ever find so if you are an audiophile then reproducing human voice well that's the pinnacle of uh, audiophile achievements basically and uh, and when we look at at our system how we produce sound then that's entirely analogous to a horn based uh, loudspeaker and it's because uh, these horn based loudspeakers when they are fully developed then they have a motor and then a compression chamber in our case the motor are your chest muscles and your diaphragm that that's that's uh, what uh, produces the motion of the air for speech the compression chamber are your lungs so these are our, we have a double compression chamber and then for a throat we have a real throat that's why the loudspeaker for uh, the throat of a horn is called a throat because the analogy was taken from uh, human anatomy and the neck we have a neck yeah so that's also another term taken from human anatomy and then the the horn mouth human mouth so basically the the horn system was mimicked from human anatomy that's the most natural system ever uh, and when you design loudspeakers the closer their structure their anatomy their composition mimics that instrument or that sound source that you want to reproduce the better result you will have so if you want to reproduce a horn based system such as the human singing with a non-horn system you will fail at it it's kind of like trying to make a brick house out of sand or out of water you you're gonna build a brick house out of brick to look like a brick house correct um, so anyway Le let's go to our next slide so in general horns are acoustic impedance matching devices so when you have just a 
a plane surface that's moving back and forth that that has a very bad uh, acoustic impedance matching acoustic impedance matching means that uh, it can give energy it can give its energy to air and, and if it's bad it means that it's unable so most of the energy that your speaker cone is trying to achieve will just be wasted as heat if it has uh, a really mismatched impedance to air and when it has a closely matched impedance to air then most of that energy will be transmitted to sound pressure and in the case of these bookshelf speakers everyone knows that they are not horns but what everyone neglects even the major speaker manufacturers is that they do have horn properties because the drivers the tweeter and their uh, mid bass units they have horn properties and it's because they are not flat but they are cone shaped so they they look like this so this is your speaker driver they, there's a dust cap in the center but apart from that they are this shaped so they are sh built as a miniature horn and they give coloration to the sound and the problem is here that because they are miniature horns they affect a very narrow band of frequency and also because they are really shallow uh, the efficiency is uh, not uh, very high it's pretty low but still significant enough to add serious horn coloration to every loudspeaker so right now we'll have take a look at that a few slides later so here this is now a, a perfect horn uh, if you want to go back to our previous presentation you can learn more about the horn shapes and horn geometries here I'm showing this because the mouth of the horn is what defines the fall off of your horn so basically it means that there, there's, there are sounds coming out produced by your uh, horn and if the frequency of those sound waves if the half wave is equal or smaller than the size of your horn then your horn will have uh, a lot of power behind it then it will be able to support the energy but if the half wave is longer than the diameter of your horn let's say you want to create a, this big sound wave so this is the half wave or or the full wave would be going off the screen for that you see here this region and that region is already not supported by the horn so that's why the efficiency of the horns is limited uh, at, at the lower range and it's also limited at the higher at the high frequencies by by the diameter of the mouth so now let's look at a pair of uh, good horns which are efficient and here when you think about our uh, human torso or, or chest would be equivalent to the compression chamber and the motor which is here so so what you see from the outside the most of it would be the motor on on the side and at the center there's a, a hole a shaft and that shaft that's the compression chamber and what we don't see here because this part here that's covering it you can remove uh, this uh, cover from the compression drivers and underneath right here there's something it's called a diaphragm that's the membrane that, that resonates that moves back and forth that creates uh, a pressure change here within the compression chamber and that pressure change 
do you travel out here and expand so it, it will pressure will be going out here and and as it, it travels and expands so as as uh, so this narrow region that makes sure that the high frequencies are amplified and as the size becomes bigger and bigger like here it becomes bigger and bigger this makes sure that lower and lower frequencies are amplified as well so here uh, the th because of this throat diameter here we have let's say an upper uh, extension of 17 kilohertz that's uh, about the range if you have uh, roughly like a, a 30 millimeter diameter uh, throat and then the mouth if you have about let's say around 40-50 uh, centimeter that's that's enough to support fully support a 500 Hertz wave technically uh, whatever the half wave frequency that corresponds to the uh, length of your horn that's the lowest frequency that can be supported by the horn so if you have for example an Artec 550, 511 horn which works down to 500 hertz actually it goes lower than that but they oversized it to make sure that down to 500 hertz it works extremely well because horns they they do not just stop at a certain frequency but they start to fall off below a certain frequency and uh, there are two types of losing efficiency and i'm not going to get into that uh, because our brains might uh, explode it can get really crazy so if you go into how to properly build horns you will end up in a lunatic asylum and <laughs> after 20 years of searching <laughs> because this is something that you know once you get in you are lost <laughs> anyway and the other feature of this be because we have this long neck the length of this so that this distance that's called the uh, length of the horn it defines the the efficiency of the horn so the longer that distance the greater the amplification will be so that's why you can have like really tiny really shallow horns and they work but they will not give you that that high efficiency as the long horns uh, give you so this horn that we see here with this compression driver gives you uh, an efficiency about 106 uh, db plus above five six seven hundred hertz so that's that's pretty decent uh, but now let's look at uh, another driver which is an eight inch driver so so these are just our standard electrodynamic drivers which are not horns uh, we use them in non-horn designs, typically uh, bass reflex enclosures and uh, this is a really coveted 8 inch uh, uh, mid-range, mid-base unit and uh, it's the dual owned 8 inch uh, driver and I took it because they, they are so kind that they have uh, uh, placed their speaker measurements in, in, in high details on their website and and it's really commendable it, it's really a, a pretty special unit and as many people are interested in it i i'd like to show it to you in uh, in more detail and i also have shown the corresponding tweeter in uh, in the previous uh, session and and showed what the horn coloration does to its sound and then that's the reason why the toe in matters so check out that video so here looking at the mid mid base unit uh, we can see when you look at, at the graph uh, this here you can see on the y scale this is the sensitivity and as you can see it's uh, 
basically this is the line for 90 dB and uh, it's 90 dB sends it efficient for between 100 Hertz to about what is this two three four five six hundred Hertz so between 100 and 600 Hertz we have a really nice super flat 90 dB actually it's fluctuates between 90 and 92 uh, really nice flat region and and above that we we see a drop that drops 3 dB down and then it like here uh, let let me use the black I use black color and circle it so here we see that 3 dB drop and then I will use blue and here we see a climb a plus 5 dB climb compared to this main region and these two things the drop and the climb are caused by the horn colorations and this drop here that we see that's caused by the surround so this this is the surround that uh, plastic material that rubbery material which holds the speaker cone to the metal basket uh, and apart from this mechanical uh, function it also uh, ha this has an acoustic side effect that here as we can see it will suck out efficiency at that frequency range so you see for 100 uh, Hertz it, it sucks out 3 dBs of efficiency which is quite a bit so that's really audible and I think words that between 6 and 700 Hertz so you will hear a dip between 6 and 700 Hertz and and that's what when people are those who are uh, allergic to horns they they are they main complain is that 6 to 700 uh, Hertz region because that gives a honky sound to horns and that's what people associate with with horns and and it's because uh, poorly designed horns are already start to fall off badly at that region and uh, and there's no support for it and guess what the 8 inch drivers which are not horns they do the same thing and they have the same kind of colorations even if they are really well designed and that's because of this surround material right here and we cannot get rid of that well wow, actually we can if we use uh, these old the ribbon types you remember these type of surrounds that the for example the Altec 515C those big uh, drivers use or many of the older drivers they used to use these uh, harmonica shape uh, surrounds and these do not produce that dip so the those old speaker drivers they in with their build they were superior with their surrounds for acoustic purposes however we have changed i mean most speaker uh, driver builders i'm not building drivers i just use the royal v uh, they have changed it to this uh bumper shaped surrounds because uh, using these bumper shapes it allows you to have higher cone excursions than the harmonica type surrounds so we have sacrificed uh, sound quality for higher excursion and this is part of the loudness world everyone is going crazy with it and 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 we do not realize i mean we consumers and often the builders and speaker designers that there's too much friendly fire that we are turning a blind eye towards because of that uh, war just to have as much speaker sound pressure as possible and when we look here once we go through this region uh, to have that uh, dip because of the surround there's the speaker cone itself because it's a v-shaped cone it creates this 5 db boost 
between a kilohertz and four kilohertz. So as you see, there is tremendous horn coloration for a normal speaker driver, which is which in people's minds is as far away from a horn as it can be. And yet there's a minus 3 dB and plus 5 dB. So we have uh, 8, 9 dBs of horn coloration right in the middle of our ear sensitivity because our brain is made in such a way that the frequencies between 1 kilohertz and 3 kilohertz that's what we are most sensitive to and we are introducing horn colorations right in that region so if you don't like horns please think about it because this is your favorite and it does have tremendous horn colorations however we can uh, eventually work around with it uh, by adjusting the crossover but it needs to be done and uh, so so the driver itself is is a raw material and you need to be aware of it when you design your crossover that above 1 kilohertz it's not going to stay flat but it rises 5 dB because of the horn effect and it doesn't rise because of uh, electrical parameters it rises because it couples to the air in that region the best and it also means that that's the best working range of your driver so if you want to cross it over you are throwing away the best feature of your driver and that's another consideration for speaker manufacturers for today just think about it that if you you are using uh, drivers then work around their strength and try to make uh, just get the most out of them and don't just mindlessly uh, follow old traditions or, or recipes because everyone is doing them and, and, and you just feel comfortable copying it. Uh, it. It's better if you think about it, if you know why something is done and then make an educated decision on how to design your speakers. And if you are a, a consumer, so you are not designing drivers, you just have a have a pair of speakers using uh, these drivers uh, like like you build uh, a DIY cabinet for the Duelon drivers then uh, the message from this for you is that with the toe in you will radically change the parameters of how of the output level of your both of your 8 inch driver unit and your tweeter unit and for that go back to the previous episode so so and because both of them change that's why building the crossover is quite a challenge because if it was only just the tweeters respond changing then it would be very easy because then if if, if you think that the top end is too much for you just throw them out throw them in less and if you are missing uh, the high extension then throw them in However, as you have seen here for the 8-inch driver, if you start towing them in, you also increase the mid-range tremendously. So if you just mindlessly build a crossover to make that region linear, then it will be linear only for a given tow in And when you change the tow in of your speakers, then it's going to alter the your your perfect crossover slope to something completely different so now let's go back to just comparing so here as you see this is a, a really efficient horn and here this is a, a, a very poor horn and the only difference between the two is that the one which was designed in mind to be a horn so all the frequencies that come out from this unit are intended 
the, to be loaded by the horn so it has the same efficiency for the entire working range but if you have just a, a smaller unit without a proper horn loading this is just a partial horn loading by the cone then in this case only a very narrow region uh, of, of frequency is affected by it and you have to find means to compensate for that and uh, of course now we live in 2020 the response for that DSP but what people often overlook is that uh, DSP is signal processing and just like processed processing meat if you processed meat is processed meat baloney is baloney by by processing the waste waste product of of slaughterhouses you will never ever reconstitute a fine steak just take take your steak and and do it well prepare it well to your taste if you like it raw or rare or medium or well done do it that way they are completely different tastes so based uh, uh, that's why if you want horns you really have to pay a big attention on how they are made and you have to get into uh, learning more about audio to to be educated enough to customize the horns to your taste or find those horns which suit your personality and if you just want to process the signal out of uh, your signal to to fit uh, a, a compromise scenario you will never um, find a whole a pure response it will always be processed and uh, when you go online and look for uh, programs and interviews and master classes with those people who are the leaders of DSP design for audio they themselves tell that they never heard a properly implemented DSP even though they are the ones who are making the best DSP today they tell you that we it, it has potential and they are working on it because they see potential in it but we are very far from uh, from making it work seamlessly so if you can do it and you have the opportunity to take the sound in its pure way to have put together a system that that doesn't make big compromises then go that way choosing that way where you first make gigantic compromises and then you try to process it to put it back together it will be Humpty Dumpty so thank you for uh, joining and uh, being here and please like and subscribe and see you next time